Thank you, Jesus. And this is the topic tonight. Let us take the safe road. No, I'll be teaching in what I studied online. No, kasi hanggang ngayon, I'm still studying the very word of the Lord. And I learned from this book. When I try to read this chapter, Matthew 21, verses 28 to 32, I find that there's a lot of things that we make, uh, we want to align biblically. Kailangan po yun. No, we want to align things in God's perspective, not in man's perspective. We want to align things in a, a biblical way so that the road that we are taking are or uh, the safe road. Okay? So, let's read the book of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 28 to 32. And please read with me. But what do you think about this? A man with two sons told the older boy, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. The son answered, No, I won't go. But later he changed his mind and went anyway. Then the father told the other son, you go. And he said, yes, sir, I will. But he didn't go. Which of the two obeyed his father? They replied, the first. Then Jesus explained this meaning. I tell you the truth. Corrupt tax collectors and prostitutes will get into the kingdom of God before you do. For John the Baptist came and showed you the right way to live. But you didn't believe him while tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even when you saw this happening, you refused to believe him and repent of your sins. Thank you, Paul, for the reading of the word of the Lord. May you may all be seated in his very presence. Now let's try to establish the background of uh, the story. Now Jesus was um, um, having conversation with his uh, disciples and uh, told the disciples about the parable of the two sons. Now here, um, the illustration was um, the father wanted the two sons to go to the vineyard. It's the same illustration that God wants us, um, for us to learn that um, living or having that um, eternal life with the Lord is an unstop work. God is from time to time telling us to do this, telling us to do that. Do this work, um, go for the harvest, um, share the gospel to, to the people, especially to the loved ones. So this is the same picture that we're having here in this story. So a man with two sons told the older boy, and he said, no, I won't go, but he did anyway. No, I won't go. It's a direct disobedience to the father you can see the very character of the two sons no i won't go now taking that jesus was the one who said this to the disciples and uh, it's a direct disobedience by saying no i won't go and this is happening around us when the lord tells us something there are some believers that uh, would refuse to do so not all will take the call not all will go not all will follow but there are some who will refuse but in the end they go anyway but the second son i said no yes sir i will i there's a big i i will it's a self-righteousness i i will do it I will go. And you see, he included um, John the Baptist in this parable, meaning the high priests during that time are not uh, taking care of the spiritual needs of these people. You see the outcome, um, the outcome of, uh, uh, or the answers of the two sons are so direct disobedience and sometimes self-righteous and Jesus included John the Baptist, that uh, it was taught to you. This was taught by John the Baptist to all of you. And you're not hearing it. You're not following it. This is what Jesus said. And he said, 
For John the Baptist came and showed you the right way to live, but you didn't believe him. And it's better for the tax collectors and the prostitute. This is the first son. Tax collectors, um, which in the Bible, if you refer that in the Bible, they are sinners, so-called. And the prostitutes, that even though they don't believe, in the end, they receive Christ as their Lord and personal and Savior. But he said, even when you saw this happening, you refused to believe. And he's talking about the disciples. Even though I told you such thing, you are hearing, but you are not believing. Jesus is telling his own people, not the outsiders, not the unbelievers, but Jesus was talking to his very own Hallelujah. So this is the condition. Our God wanted us to work in his vineyard. And that is for sure. Not unless we are all dead. Not unless we are paralyzed. Not unless we are bedridden. We cannot do the work of the Father. But as long as you have the strength, you receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. This is non-stopping. The song is really, really good. No one can stop us. There will be a lot of working, a lot of things to do, a lot of things to accomplish, a lot, a lot of things to give glory to our God. Now, a very simple parable taught by Jesus to his follower, and one little word Jesus wanted to emphasize tonight. And this is what I've got from the very word of the Lord. One of the most important words in the whole Bible with only two letters, and that is the word do. This is the emphasis of God in that parable. I called you to work in my vineyard. This is the call of God to all of us, for us to work in his vineyard. And the word is do. We must do. We must obey. We must follow. We must carry on. We must um, obey the very word of the Lord. There are a few related words like doing, did, and didn't. As we can see in the parable, no? we, we can see that doing, did, and didn't do. So BKK family and friends, I believe there are two eternities as well. One of which good to hear about, and the other is a horrifying kind of place. But there are two eternities, right? That is the eternal life that we will have with Jesus Christ and the eternity spending in that horrible place called hell. And that is true. We have two places, eternal life with Jesus and eternal life in hell. What, what we do while living in this life, decide which of those two lives is ours, which we spend the rest of everlasting time. By their fruits, you shall know them. I don't have to question people. I don't have to question believer. But God is the judge. He knows what is going on in your life. He knows your fruit. He knows how occupied you are. He knows how obedient you are. And he is the judge. He knows. And what we are doing today until the time that God will come will determine which place we are going to. There are two misunderstandings about Christianity that I want to deal with. Number one is the unbelievers, and one is the believers, which both are serious mistakes. I'll show you why. You know, what I'm telling you right now is biblical. It's all taken from the Bible. It's in the context, and not just taking one word and give it to you, and that's it. It comes from me, if that's the case. But I will give you references and I will give you the facts that the Bible is telling us. Take from the state the unbelievers make. They think that being a Christian is being a do and doer, which is very good, which is very true. Christian must do and doer. And what is that all about? Sometimes do doer is being kind to the old folks doing some charities, which are all good. Being good to someone, which are very shallow explanation to the do. But this is what they think about Christian, doing all good, doing charities, giving in that offering basket, which is good also, but you can do giving without loving, right? You can give with 
resistant heart. You can give with, uh, out of force. You can give out of obligation without love. And that is due as well. But this is a shallow explanation of what is due for Christian life is all about. Then many believe, unbelievers will say, I can be as good as Christian, of course. As good as with those people going to the church. And they mean, I can be as good as them. If that is the case of do, doer as a believer, the unbeliever can match that. They can standard themselves to that kind of standard. But that is not true, actually. That is not only what we are doing. Our life and our faith is not based in doing good works. Much more than that, that is only the outcome of having Christ in our life. That is the output. That is the fruit of the Spirit in us. But it, that is not all uh, our faith is all about. That is the unbeliever's mistake. The Christian is simply a do-doer. But the believer's mistake is the opposite. I find it um, disturbing when I read and, uh, and uh, having that verses to the one that they are quoting, which is very much um, far from the context. We, you, sh you should base that in the context. But the unbelievers mistake is the opposite. I'm having the confidence that all of us here in the room are believers. Amen po ba? Mga believers po ba tayo sa Panginoon? Amen. So that mistake is to think that Christian is somehow does nothing. When you receive Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, that's it. Confident enough to sit there, do nothing, wait for the, the blessed hope to come, wait for Christ to come. Even though I will not work in the vineyard as was told by the Lord, I'm still okay. I'm safe. I think that's where the mistake is. The one who says Jesus Christ done it all, it is finished at the cross. And the believers that good works are not used because we are not saved by works. Now, if you emphasize it is finished, san mo kinuha yon? Of course, your reference is at the cross. It is finished. The context of that it is finished is the work of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to save the believers. Following the command of the Father, following the do that the Father told him to do, following the very word of the Father to save us and the whole world from the sin, is finished. He said to the Father, Lord, I completed the things that you told me to do. Now I give up my spirit. That is the context. That is not the context that you can take and said, everything is fine, all is good, God done everything so I can rest and have peace and be peaceful in my quiet place. Hallelujah. This is my context. So, if you say it is finished at the cross and believes good work and we cannot, we will not do the good works anymore because we are saved, I think it contradicts the very context that uh, we just read a while ago when Jesus said, go to the vineyard. Son, go to the vineyard. There is a command to do. So it's conflict. So when there is conflict in a bib biblical condition, we must take the right and safe road for us to travel. We can take that as well. Yes, it is the finished work of Jesus Christ, but remove the complacency. Remove that we are safe to sit, nothing to do. No, we are free. We are good. That is complacent kind of life of Christian. And the Holy Spirit will keep on prompting you of doing good works. Hallelujah. Do you get me? Amen po ba? Let's give God a clap offering muna. Now many Christians believe that Jesus Christ done all that are necessary. And that is very true. What is not true? All I need to do is accept that as soon as I accept that, I am safe. You are not dead. You are not paralyzed. You are not bedridden. You are still alive and okay and strong. You need to do. Right? You need to do good works. Because that is the, the, the outcome of receiving Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Hallelujah. My suggestion is, if this is the, 
if this is the context that you are going to take inside your heart, that everything, what, is, what was necessary was all done by Jesus Christ, yes, true. But don't be so complacent. Don't sit there and say, I will, I will do nothing. I will just stay here. I am comfortable with this life because I am safe. That is not true. Hallelujah. We have a lot of things to do, a lot of work to do in the vineyard of the Lord. Now, BKK and friends, I have shown you tonight that when the Bible has disagreement with what some believers claim to be true, I would say that is not a safe road. That is the only a thing that I can say. It's not a safe road to follow. Hallelujah. So we will take the safest road biblically for us to move on with our spiritual life. Now my belief is Christians have to do many things if you claim that you are saved. There are a lot of things that God wanted us to do, wanted us to accomplish, wanted us to, to take, wanted us to finish, wanted us to uh, build a lot of things. So if you are saved, there are a lot of things to do. And this is the, the very word. This haven't preached by anyone. And, uh, and haven't revealed by people, preacher like me. You say in Romans 11, this is a clever, very clever verse by Paul. When he said, this is all the more urgent. During their time, Paul said, it was urgent. How much more? during our time it's very very urgent and he continued by saying how late it is time is running out wake up for our salvation is nearer now than when we first believe why salvation is nearer when they first believe to their lord and savior jesus christ is it not accomplished are they not saved oh para mas maganda Okay, classic, amplified classic version or edition. Beside this, you know, what a critical hour this is. How it is high time now for you to wake up out of your sleep, rose to reality. For salvation, the final deliverance is nearer. The final deliverance is nearer to us now when we first believe so when they first trusted they first adhered to the call of jesus christ first relied on jesus christ first received jesus christ as the lord and personal savior that is not all not unless very clever word not unless paul is facing jesus and jesus will say Welcome, my good and faithful servant, come to my rest. He said, no stopping in your spiritual life. Hello? Hello? Or else it will be a contradiction when you say, it is finished. And Paul is saying this. We are near to that salvation. We are near to that time when Jesus declared and welcomed us in his very bosom hallelujah it's near diba madali lang mambasahin yan eh hallelujah so this is a very clever word for the believer not to become complacent in their spiritual life hallelujah for you not to stop, for you to continue doing good, for you to continue what the Father is telling us to do, we must do. Because it is not final yet. It should be in front of Jesus, Jesus welcome you. Then Paul is saying, it's nearer to that salvation when we first receive Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior. I, was, I am not the one who telling that. That is Romans 13, 11. And we love to quote Amplified anyway. So I quote Amplified for you. Classic version. Hallelujah. So whenever we heard this text preach, we are nearer to our salvation than we first, when we first believe. We never heard that. When the time comes that I will be in the presence of the Almighty God, I will shout at the top of my voice, Once saved, always saved then that will be true. Because why? 
I'm already in front of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Paul was very true when he quoted Romans 13, when he wrote that, for us not to be complacent in our spiritual life. It should be moving, growing, leveling up. This should be our life. Amen po ba? Non-stopping. Believing and doing. This is what God is uh, trying to tell us tonight. But for now, we will be sensitive with the dealing of the Holy Spirit to walk in righteousness of Jesus Christ, not to be disqualified when the time comes. Hallelujah. Later on, I will show you more. So the Bible is full of do's and don'ts. Things we should be doing and things we shouldn't be doing. In the Old Testament, there are 600 plus do, do's and don'ts. Most of them came from Moses. He said the Jews what they should uh, be doing and shouldn't be doing. So that's why he set all these laws for them to follow. But it's really difficult. It's really difficult to follow. Now, 630 commandments Moses gave to Israelites, and maybe you are just familiar with the Ten Commandments. And maybe not all, maybe some. So the ten big ones that has more don'ts than do's, more shall not than shall. And these are the Ten Commandments that God gave to Moses. So let's first go back in the beginning so that we will understand. Let us all establish why um, I'm saying that let us take the safe road. No? And if it is biblically disagreeing to what is the claim, we should be doing what the Bible is telling us to do. So let us first go back to the beginning. When Adam faced God with only one don't, the rest he could all do. This is what God said. So we have to look at the Garden of Eden and what's the job of Adam. Of course, he was the gardener of God. So he, was, he has only one don't, and that is not to eat the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. He said, and all the fruits you will eat. It's a good deal. Amen? Hallelujah. Isa lang yung bawal, and the rest you can eat. Wow, it's a good deal. But what happened? Of course, he disobeyed God. So the story of the young man, there was this young man around 18 years old was asking the, the preacher if the story of Adam that uh, eat the knowledge of the fruit uh, of good and evil was true. He said, I don't believe that that is really written in the Bible. I don't believe that Adam really disobeyed God. And so the preacher um, tell the story or um, give condition to this guy, to this young man. And he said, okay, what if I will uh, place you in a, in a big library wherein there are a lot of books inside the shelves and ask you that you can read all these books inside this library. You can read all. And I will tell you one thing, the preacher said. On the top of the table, you can see that book. You cannot read that book until you reach the age of 20 because that book is for 20 and above only. Then he asked this young man, which book are you going to read first? Then the young man said, the one that was forbidden for me to read. Actually, this is the very sinful nature that uh, we acquired from Adam. God save, saved us, make our soul clean, but he did not save your very flesh. There's still a fleshly Adamic nature inside of us that sometimes from time to time our old us is rising and trying to do some nasty things. Amen po ba? Sometimes you think bad to your neighbor, sometimes you say bad to some people, sometimes you are having that murmuring inside of you. That is Adamic sin that we inherit from Adam. And this is true also that we are all came from Adam and we have this Adamic nature inside of us. Put a notice, don't, and you know human nature wants to do it. If there are bawal, don't cut here or don't go inside the one way. No, most of us will cut and go our own way. So we are all sons and daughters of Adam. Since he did what he shouldn't do, we too want to do it. 
There are sins still inside this fleshly body that we have. Amen po ba? We are saved, yes. But we, this flesh is not saved. Amen po ba? Bible study po muna tayo. So I remember the national anthem of all the sinners. Alam niyo po ba yung national anthem? Okay, I did it my way. <laughs> Di ba? Yan sometimes we're doing that. So let us move to Abraham. He is the man who did what he was told to do. Very good, very obedient kind of man. This was the house of Abraham in the land of Ur before God told him to go to the promised land. This was now rebuilt. Actually, the archaeologists found this. And they tried to pattern everything and uh, build the, the real pattern of the house. And they found this. And after finishing, they have this. Mayaman talaga si Abraham. He has this house. And this beautiful house, when God told him to go to the promised land, he left this house. And you know what, what was God told him to, to have? The, the tent, he will stay in that tent for the rest of his life. And he has no argument with that. He has no doubt with that. He chose to follow God and obey God, which is a very good thing to do. Hallelujah, talagang binargay niya yung beautiful house to have the tent just to obey the Lord. He was a man who did. He has his faults, of course. He lied. He was dishonest as well. He saved his skin. But the big thing that God blessed him when he was, when he did what God told him to do. Do you still remember when God told Abraham to bring his son, kill as a sacrifice for the Lord? Do you still remember that? And Abraham never questioned God. He never argued. He just took his son and offered to God. Now, this is what the angel told Abraham. The angel stopped Abraham and told him this, Genesis 22, 12. Don't hurt the boy or harm him in any way, the angel said. Now I know that you truly obeyed God. Hallelujah. It's still non-stopping. It's a do-do kind of work. And it's really kind of uplifting to hear this from the Lord. I know that you truly obey God. Wow, my Lord. And this is a kind of Christian that God wants us to be. This, is, this should be our future kind of life. If we are not doing so today, tomorrow we can start. Amen po ba? And because you were willing to offer him your only son, now I know how fearlessly you fear God. It's, it's good, right? It's better. It's super, super good. When the Lord tells us that we fear the Lord, that's why we obeyed Him. Amen? Then rather, there is a word that comes from God and no one is doing it. Hallelujah. God will not pleased with that. Now let's move on to Moses. He was the man that struggled what God told him, what eventually did it, just like the first son. He saved his people from bondage. His people has no life, no property, no money, miserable, hopeless life they have. They have nothing. Moses rescued them or redeemed them. This is what the Lord told him to do. Moses go on to say, now that you are rescued, now that you are redeemed, you can find this in Deuteronomy 27 and 28. Redeemed, this is how you must live. That's where he gave the 360 commandments of those of do's and don'ts. Hallelujah. Ang hirap, no? Just to be the people of God who is a very much um, unique you know, from the other surrounding countries. You are obeying the Lord. It should be followed, no? not following the other, the other life of the surrounding nations. The Lord wants you to, to have this for you to stay on you know, and obey and do the, the very will of the Lord. So he has given them to them, 630 of all those, of those commandments. Now, do you know that the New Testament uh, do's and don'ts are much more difficult to obey than the Old Testament? 
Because there's a lot of argument I hear that we need to abolish the Old Testament because we are now living in the Old uh, New Testament. We must abolish and not accomplish the, the old uh, laws because we are now living in grace and mercy of God in the New Testament. But don't you know that if you really, really dig in and read the very word of the Lord, you will find it very hard. Commandments in the New Testament rather than the Old Testament. I'll give you some sample. You know this man, A.J. Jacobs, I watched him uh, in uh, TEDS you know, uh, on TV. And uh, he has this book, A Year of Living Biblically. And one year he followed the biblical aspect and requirements in the Bible from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And he said it's very, very hard because he has to change his clothes. There should not have um, a mixed, mixed um, fiber inside of that. So that's why he, he, um, he, he wore that white color kind of dress which God requires them to wear. Hallelujah. Sinunod niya talaga, talagang very faithful. And he said in the end, it's really, really hard, especially the New Testament. The New Testament commands are more harder than the Old Testament. And think I would agree to him. Why? Let's take some example from the Bible. Let's try to take the Old Testament commandment number five, which says Exodus 20, 13. You must not murder anyone. This is the command of God to Moses and the people of Israel. Now, before you will be called a murderer or killer, you must kill someone. Right? But in the New Testament... 1 John 3.15 15 or verse 15 says, Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. Now, hates his brother. It means to say they are both believers. Hates his brother. And you know that no murderer has eternal life in him. Which one is more difficult? Kill before you, you will be called murderer or think bad things and you are now a murderer. So why there are a lot of people, preachers, wanted to abolish the old if they, not, they cannot comply the new? So there's no sense at all. God wants us to obey every word that was written inside this Bible. Yun lang yun. Period. By the grace and mercy of the Holy Spirit that is in us. Amen po ba? Palakpaka po muna natin ng Panginoon. Wow. Bible study muna tayo ha. Oh, hallelujah. Bible study muna tayo. So, Old Testament commandment number 7, Exodus 2014. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not commit adultery. Once you have sex outside your marriage, that is called adultery. But you must do it first before you will called an adulterous. But in the New Testament, taking Matthew chapter 5, verse 28, but I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her and in his heart. Hallelujah. Yung mga tingin na hinahatid. Diba yung gano'n na tingin na hinahatid pa? Ano sabi doon? Adulteros ka na. So which one is heavier? Is it the new or the old? So why not say abolish the New Testament rather than saying abolish the old? Amen po ba? Dapat ganun ang sabi, let's abolish the New Testament because it's, it's too hard to comply. Hallelujah. These are all knowledge and wisdom that comes from God. Now, that I want uh, to share to all of you. I want uh, BKK family and members to be knowledgeable when it comes to Bible. So no one can can twist the truth. It's, it's good. It's good. It's good to claim it is a finished work. It's nice. 
But if there is contradiction in the Bible, let's just take another road, the safer road. Amen? It's good to claim. God finished it all. I love that. I wanted that. Hallelujah. But how to use it? It's another kind of story. Amen po ba? We can take that, yes. But we will still do. We will still have to work. I listed down the do's and don'ts of the New Testament. Nilista ko po. Hindi ko pa na check to. I will check. Maybe I'm wrong. But I already reached 1,050. Compared to 630, Old Testament commandments. Hindi ko pa po to na check. Maybe I'm wrong. 150 na po na don'ts ang nakita ko. And do's. So which one is even heavier? The new or the old? It's the, it's the new. Hallelujah. And you know what, 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 what the Bible is saying? That if you do the ten and you refuse to do one, it means to say you did not carry all the nine. It's all disobedient in the sight of God, not fulfilling ten when he said ten. Hallelujah. Amen po ba doon? We're still okay? Okay pa. That those who say we accepted Jesus Christ and all is perfect and do not worry about because of the finished work of Jesus Christ, well, I beg to disagree. 100%. Hindi pwede. I love to say that it is all finished by the Lord. But to me, I'm not stopping. I will do the will, the work of God as long as I have the strength. And it is very, very necessary. I only give an example for us to understand that we need to draw more closer to Jesus and know more about the Holy Spirit to follow what is commanded in the New Testament. There is a damage cost, you know? There is a damage cost. Ayan ko muna, ha? Okay. So there is a damage caused by being complacent in a Christian life. This is very true. Pag hindi ka na sensitive sa sin, you thought everything is correct. If you are not sensitive with the dealing of the Holy Spirit, you thought all the things that you are doing is right. Why? Because you become complacent. Now, check this out. Philippians 2.12. What did Paul said in the book of Philippians 2? Therefore, my dear... My dear ones, have you have always obeyed my suggestion? So now, not only with the enthusiasm you would show in my present, but much more because I am absent to work, your side of salvation, reverence, and awe, and trembling, serious caution, tenderness, conscience, watchfulness. Paul is saying in this chapter 2 verse 12 is that you must work out your salvation. Now, it's not contradicting to what is said in Romans 13. It's non-stopping. It means to say, haven't you have not been in the very presence of God that God, Jesus Christ will declare that you're okay to come in? He said non-stopping. You should work out your salvation. What is that work out with salvation? I mean, it's, you do good things. It's still. It's prerequisite. It's needed. It's part of the Christian life. Patay lang po ang hindi gumagana. Amen po ba? Hallelujah. And Christian must understand that biblical God is a God of love and God of judgment. You see what happened to the Holocaust during the Holocaust time when God told the Israelites to obey my words. Obey all these commandments because this is for your own good. But they are stiff-neck kind of people. They disobeyed God. So then God removed what? The protection. Because you want to go with your own life, then go on. He removed the protection. What happened? Hitler and his cohort killed them all. Chapter 27 of Deuteronomy. Holocaust time po. Now I will explain what kind of God is that. This is po the revelation of God to me. Hindi ko kinuha sa kung saan saan. Uh. He is God that loves people and punishes people. That is the truth. 
He love, his love is out of the abundance of who he is. He is a loving God. He doesn't want to punish people. Why? Because he is a God of love. But he is a God of justice. And here is why. And his punishment is out of the abundance of people what? Disobedience. This is the disobedience of the people and left him no choice but to act justifiably because he's the judge. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you disobey God, that's your call. That is your choice. You made the wrong choice. You will bring yourself to where? To hell. Hello. Hello? Amen po ba? Because he's the judge of the living and the dead. And he is a very, very just God. And you made the call. You choose to be that in that place. He is a God of love. He's a God of mercy. Sabi nga doon, a grace. No, if there is grace, you will be drawn by the grace of God. Yes, that is true. But if you're called for your life to be in hell, then God will stand as a judge. Because he's the God of justice. Amen po ba? Hallelujah. Hindi <laughs> na pinipreach ito ngayon. Pinipreach ngayon, magandang buhay, maayos, ala, sige, tudo. <laughs> Amen po ba? This is the reality inside the book. So we must be careful sa ating pong libro. Deuteronomy 27, our miserable curses declared by God to the Jews at the time they will disobey God. This is a Holocaust time where Hitler and his cohorts killed those Jews during the time. But when they obey, the imaginable overflowing blessing of God will surround them and run after him. And it's happening. It's happening. Hallelujah. You will harvest the very blessing of the Lord. It's easy to harvest the very blessing of God if you obey God. But it's other way around. If we disobey the Lord, He has no choice but to judge accordingly. According to your choice. That means the do's and don'ts of the new covenant applies to us because God does not change. He is the same today, yesterday, and forever according to the writer of Hebrews. Then it will be totally unfair for the unbeliever to be punished. Imagine mo to, ah. If the believer commits adultery, God will say, you go to hell. If the believer commits adultery, God will say, you're okay. You go to heaven. What kind of judgment is that? Do you think about that? Have you have a thought of that? Not unless they repent. Not unless they, they repent remorse from their sin and go back to God and plead God, Lord, hallelujah, Lord, please forgive me. Or it will be an unfair kind of call. Di ba tama ako? Kunyari, ang unbeliever, nag, uh, nagkaroon siya ng adultery. Tapos ang anak ng Diyos, adultery rin. Sabihin mo dun sa unbeliever, you go to hell. Tapos sa anak mo, sabihin mo, ah, okay ka lang. Sige, mag ano ka pa. Gawin mo pa yan. It will be an unjust kind of God. I don't believe in that. Hallelujah. So you commit adultery, but Jesus' blood covers it all, then I'm okay. You are not okay, my child. Not unless you remorse and repent and go back to the very presence of God. Don't be afraid if you make mistakes. God is open 24-7. And that is what God wants us to do. Come here, my child. There is forgiveness for you. Why? Because he is a God of love. He cannot deny his children when his children come to him and asking him for forgiveness. Just like the father, no? Yung earthly father, it's the same feeling. Pag pumunta ang anak mo sa'yo, may, may tatay ba na sabi, anak, grabe, nakapatay ka. O sige, okay lang yan. Magpatay ka pa. <laughs> Parang no sense at all. Parang hindi yata tama. Amen po ba? Parang hindi biblical. Hallelujah. Parang sabi-sabi lang para gumanda yung, yung ating pakiramdam. Na hindi masaktan yung mga gustong masaktan. Walang ganun. What is in the Bible should be preached accordingly, rightly. 
Hallelujah. That would make God the most unfair, unjust, unreliable, untrue God that He could ever be. Pag ganun ang judgment, okay lang yan, magpatay ka na. Welcome to heaven. Tapos pag unbeliever na kapatay, go to hell. Hallelujah. I don't think so. So let's turn to Jesus. Now look at His life and His death. How He could describe His life. Peter said, went around doing what is good. Did Jesus stop? Hallelujah. Did Jesus stop biblically just for us to justify it is finished? Yes, no, you are contradicting. You are contradicting the parable and you are contradicting Peter. Because Jesus is doing, going around and doing good. And if you are a child of God, you must do the same. Sundan mo lang yung master mo. Amen po ba? Everything that Jesus said was good for people. That was his life because he came to do the very will of the Father. Everything he said is what the Father told him to say. He lived a three short years but a wonderful kind of life. He went around doing good. If we say that we are the follower of Jesus Christ, that should be true as well in us. We should go around and doing good. So it's non-stopping, my children. You cannot justify it is finished if that's the case. Let's turn to Jesus Christ now and look at his life. Okay, but the real test of Jesus' obedience came when he faced death on the cross. And this is reality. This is very true. Jesus didn't want to be crucified. In the fleshly form, Jesus knows very well how hard it is to be crucified. He's been seeing that. He knows it well. He, he has seen that. Many people crucified in Rome. God is very aware of that. Jesus is very aware of that. And he knows the pain. He knows the cruelty of men. That's why he doesn't want to be crucified. It was the biggest battle between his will and the Father's will. Son and God. Hallelujah. You want me to prove to you? Then I will prove to, to you. So much battle that sweat come out from the forehead was mixed with blood. Anong sabi dyan sa look? And being in agony, agony. And he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat beca became like gr great drops of blood falling down from the forehead of God. Down to the ground. Jesus sweat blood. And what is that? I search, ito po, ano na to, internet na to, Wikipedia. Hematredos, hematedroses, ang tawag nila, hematredoses. Hematedroses, also called blood sweat, as a very rare condition in which humans sweat blood. And what is that all about? Hematedroses is a condition in which capillary blood vessels that fed to the sweat glands rupture. Mantakin mo, nag-rupture palang ugat ng Panginoon. Causing them to exude blood, occurring under the condition of what? Extreme physical and emotional stress. Then tell me, is Jesus really, really brave during that time to be crucified? No. He was in agony, agonizing so much that not to go to the cross. If his will be done, but not his will. Hallelujah. Amen po ba? This is Jesus Christ I'm talking talking about. There are many who died without experiencing, experiencing hematedrosis. Now because it was horrible death, it was a lingering long kind of death. It will take a minimum three days and a maximum of seven days. You're just hanging there. With all this um, pain, hallelujah, with all this pain, you are dying on the cross. He will be crucified naked, laughed, humiliated, and the agony of suffering seems like endless. Jesus knows so well. Alam ng Panginoon to. But one thing is good for Christ. Alam po natin yan. That was not the reason why Jesus experienced him at Hematedroses. Ano po? Because it was the first time in his life that the Father would abandon him. Jesus doesn't know sin. Di niya alam what his sin is all about. 
But during the crucifixion, not only one man, but the entire world, the sins of the entire world was with him. Now, a sinful man cannot be united with the Father. There's always a separation because in between is a big sin. That's why Jesus was left by the Father. And this is a very, very sad experience of Jesus Christ at the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. Ito yung saddest part. Why that, 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 uh, that, that, that sweat of blood came out? Why did the vein of Jesus burst? Because he doesn't want this to happen. Hallelujah. But the great obedience na dapat natin sundin sa ating Panginoong Yesus. Hallelujah. He followed the will of the Father. Yun pong example ng obedience na tinatawag. Up to the cross, you're still obeying the Father. That He would make the sin in our behalf and even though He doesn't know sin. He would be threatened as the worst sinner of the world. He doesn't deserve it. That is why Jesus experienced him at Tedros's. Literally at the cross, he went through hell. Hell was a dark place. Three hours of darkness. Why? Sinners go to hell. Wow. Why? Because of his great love for all of us. Mahal na mahal tayo ng Panginoon. He was thirsty during the three hours of darkness. He said, I am thirsty. And they cruelly gave him vinegar with increasing thirst. Like increase pa yung thirst, imbis quench yung thirst. Hell is godless place. That's why Jesus cried out, Eli, Eli, la, Lema, Sabakthani. God, God, why have you forsaken me? Why? Because you cannot unite sin with the Father. Yun ang sinasabi ko. If the believer keep on sinning, you cannot unite them with God. It's not okay. Hallelujah. It's a big no-no. That's why the call of the Lord is for us to walk in righteousness through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We are called to live righteously in the sight of God. Amen po ba? Palakpakan po muna natin ang Panginoon. Oh, hallelujah. Kailangan matapos po ako ng 7.30. That cry was a cry that the human Jesus lost touch with his own father. Jesus fought the battle at the Garden of Gethsemane knowing what will happen to him at the cross. Jesus said, Father, if you are willing, if you are only willing, remove this cup from me. I don't want to be crucified. But still, not my will, but your will be done. Is there a do? Yes. You need to do. You need to obey. We need to comply with the New Testament as a believer of the Lord. There's no pick and choice. I choose only, you know? Pick lang. Ito gusto ko, akin to. Ito hindi to akin. Hindi pwedeng ganun. Hallelujah. Pick and choose. Walang ganun. You must read everything through the power of the Holy Ghost. You can make it. Pangako ng Panginoon yan. You have a victorious life. Why so? Be afraid if you read all those. Maganda yun eh. Maganda yun to realize everything. It's not because I say, it's not because said by the popular preacher, oh, okay, yung ganda, no? Hindi na natin babasahin, okay na yun. But if you read, you will know more. The power of the Holy Spirit is in you. Knowledge and wisdom will be given by God. That the same Jesus until now is doing good by, according to Romans 8.34, Jesus is still interceding in our behalf, still non-stop doing it is finished is not a biblical way of saying that. That we were okay, nothing to do, sit down and relax. You are contradicting every word spoken in the Bible, if that's the case. Amen po ba? 
I will take that. Lord, it is finished. All necessary have been done. Yes, I agree. But I will keep on moving. I think that's the correct, uh, correct uh, phrase that we should use. Amen po ba? We still keep on doing. Lord, it is a finished work of the Lord. Then okay. But non-stopping. Still doing. Hallelujah. Let's move on the Christian life. How do we begin? Of course, by doing good. Mantakin mo, no? From, from the Garden of Eden, papunta po tayo sa Christian life. But I will take that next week. Shall we all rise and shall we pray?